So everyone knows Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, but what about the third man on the Apollo 11 mission? Michael Collins is sometimes referred to as the forgotten astronaut. Matt Gregory talked to him about the joy and the fear of being part of an historic moment. Was there anything special you felt because of the 50 year anniversary? It's hard to feel 50 years. How do you, uh, how would you go about feeling it? I think of the Apollo mission as being a long and very fragile uh, daisy chain of events. What link in that chain is going to get broken today? Am I, everything going to go all right? Are we going to go all the way to the moon? Go all the way around? Watch these two guys land? Watch them come back up? Go all the way home? What was it like flying in space, so to speak? Well, going, uh, going to the moon, that, that couple of days to get there, we, were, we, we didn't see the Earth, we didn't see the moon until we got, because we were just circling around sideways like a chicken on a barbecue. What was the first thing you thought when you're up close, you turned the, the spacecraft around to look at it? I thought, my God, look at that thing. The sun was cascading around its rim and gave it a wonderful uh, uh, lighting situation. It made the uh, craters uh, look darker and the, the light part look lighter and uh, it was, wow. Neil and Buzz were going down and then you they spent you know, the day on the moon. What was that like for you? You mean now, you, you have to put this in the right context. Now you were the loneliest person in the whole lonely uh, sequence of lonely events on going from the, to the lonely moon and you were behind the lonely moon in the loneliest orbit that a lonely person had ever been um, subjected to. Weren't you lonely? Uh, no, God, I was not lonely. I was happy. I, uh, Columbia was a happy home. It was, I had, uh, I had hot coffee. If I wanted, I had music. It was uh, familiar uh, to me. Uh, I trusted the machine. I trusted Neil and Buzz in their machine. That was a happy time for me, and I wasn't in the slightest lonely at all. Was it uh, at all nerve wracking? thinking about them going down and then coming back up. So I wasn't worried about the descent and the landing uh, nearly as much as I was about their return. If that engine uh, didn't ignite, uh, they were two dead men on the moon and there was nothing I could do about it. I didn't have any landing gear on, uh, on my spacecraft, Columbia. I couldn't go down and help them. So uh, that was just part of the, part of the flaw in the, uh, in the planning, uh, but it was a risk that we didn't know how to work around and we were willing to accept. As someone who's been to the moon, do you think we're alone in the universe? Oh, I think there's probably life in the universe, yeah, I mean, I, but, uh, you know, flying from here to the moon and back is like, uh, is like going nowhere practically, uh, so uh, it doesn't change my, my views on life in the universe, I think it, yes, it's probably there, but I'm, I'm no smarter because I flew to the moon. What do you think should happen next for the space program in the United States? Well, I'm, I'm a firm believer uh, in, in taking advantage of, of what John F. Kennedy gave us on Apollo, which was a masterpiece of simplicity. He told us what to do, and uh, he told us when to do it and then we had to fill in the how to do it. And I'd like to take that same approach uh, to Mars and I, I'd like for us to go to what I would call a, uh, the, the JFK uh, Mars Direct uh, mission.